quiet opening to the world's greatest crime story. The Allied War Crimes Commission begins its sittings in London. Lord Wright, the chairman, opened the proceedings. This is the first time newsreel cameras have been allowed inside the law courts. Contrast this orderly procedure with the macabre scenes in Milan where the bodies of Benito Mussolini, his fascist accomplices and his mistress Clara Patacci were kicked and spat upon by a seething crowd. From Milan, Mussolini began the march on Rome which lifted him to power. In the same city, his story ended in this frenzied crescendo of hate and degradation, his body hanging from the roof of a petrol station. Vidkun Quisling, first of the breed of traitors who sold their countries to the Nazis, begins the legal battle for his life. At a police court hearing in Oslo, the man whose name has become a word of infamy in Europe's dictionaries was remanded for trial by a special court. The woman who claims to be the wife of William Joyce. She was arrested with Lord Hawhaw at Flensburg. It is alleged that she also made broadcasts in English over the Nazi radio. She is being held for full investigation. Joyce himself, shot through the buttocks, arrives at a British military hospital near Lüneburg. British soldiers get a look at the one-time black shirt who used to come over the air with his sneering, Germany calling. Note the closed eyelids, and then watch for the sly glances as he passes down the lines of contemptuous Tommies. If British fighting men in Lüneburg Hospital notice a bad smell somewhere around, they'll guess what it is. Captured German one-man submarines are under inspection near Copenhagen. This type is the Mosch, 46 feet long, electrically propelled and carrying two torpedoes. Another type is the Bieber, weighing six tons. They also carried two torpedoes and had a range of 100 miles. From the submarines that misfired to the American firebomb that has burned out a third of Tokyo. Filled with jellied petrol, it burns at 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. sea off Okinawa, the American Navy, with which British units are cooperating, fights it out with Jap planes. Sea and sky erupt with flak and flame in this furious fight to the death. Jap suicide bombers are burned out of the sky. American aircraft return to their carriers. A damaged fighter lands in the sea. Its crew was picked up later by a destroyer. Others are less lucky. One crash landing plane leaps off the deck and fouls the carrier's superstructure. 